uh, integrated or validated. Validated by who? Coming to my data center to configure the services as I like. How much nodes I will need. So it's a one-stop shop. Mr. Flowfox, are you now going Dutch on my servers? Hi everyone and welcome back to um, our Did You Know series and to, again with my awesome friend down there, Barrett Waters. Hey Barrett. Hi man, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Not not so tired uh, um, since uh, 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 like with other days, but how are you? Why why did you ask me again for a, for a session? Well. I'd like to know something on Azure Stack HCI again. You know, last time we talked about uh, running it from a USB drive and you had that awesome USB drive with an NVMe inside it, which you, I think, custom made because I didn't see it in the shop yet. But that USB drive needs to go into some hardware. Yeah. Um, and since we looked at less supported scenarios yesterday or the last time um how do i get the right hardware to go with my usb drive ah so you really want to go for supported ones yes please ah okay you can build on your own but then it's totally unsupported so there are a few requirements on uh, you need to fulfill but as a microsoft and also from a support perspective we recommend to use so-called integrated or validated solutions. Uh, integrated or validated? I, uh, validated by who? Integrate and validate system means the, sy uh, the system is validated from Microsoft mm -hmm. and the partner to run Azure Stack HCI operating system mm -hmm. as a whole solution with 22 H2. So the next release we will see or we, we uh, in now most likely with the release of the video, it will be GA. Um, we will also validate the switches you use to, uh, to fulfill the specific requirements for 22 okay. H2. So mm -hmm. it's a solution validated for your operating system for your workload on Azure Stack HCI. Okay. You can browse through our hardware catalog. Um, mm -hmm. I will put the link in the description for you, my friend. Um, it's on our website and there you have a bunch of partners mm -hmm. like Lenovo, HP, Data on, uh, Thomas Crane, Dell, etc., etc., who mm -hmm. are offering systems. And there you can have integrated or validated systems. Okay. So, um, rolling that back to something I built myself, right? I, I, I take this big computer, I chuck it full with hard drives, maybe even put a 10 gig network device in there. Um, and that is not really supported? No, because uh, we are running things on those devices like the attestation service with an Azure Stack HCI, mm -hmm. which gives us some more options like deporting or the older operating system or running our appliance solutions like AKS. And we always know that the hardware is working and we know the configurations and the, that they're supported so we are developing above a known system mm -hmm, with the windows mm -hmm. server you know you can't put everything in a windows server yeah true it's it's like a chicken cow pig problem <laughs> and with that we don't know what uh what the windows server could look like with an hpci mm -hmm. we know about it yeah. and there is even a differentiation validated system means it's validated it's supported it can run edge stick hci mm -hmm. If you want to go move a, big, uh, a step forward, then you would go for an integrated system. As you can see on my screen, my friend, mm -hmm. let me try to zoom in a bit for you. Um, with an integrated system, you have not only the validation of the solution, like you have mm -hmm. with a validated node, mm -hmm. you will also have the Azure Stack HCI operating system pre-installed okay. on top of the hardware coming out of the factory mm -hmm. it's also often coming with an installation service of the partner mm -hmm. or with a slightly on top of your bill service fee and then they will help you to configure your cluster yeah that, that that service 
is consisting of someone coming to my data center to configure the services as I like? It depends on the partner. So okay. at some point, partners can do it remotely, especially mm -hmm. in the pandemic, we saw a lot of remote deployments, Okay. but they're helping you defining the architecture okay. and then deploying it in a supported manner. Okay. Support, um, then you have the highest component SAA, which means they are tested against the solution. We mm -hmm. ensure that it's working. Mm -hmm. You will have a joint support system. So for example, if you, if you see a storage issue mm -hmm. and it's not related to a fair disk, it's related to storage spaces direct, for example. So mm -hmm. Azure Sync HCI storage system, yeah. Dell support or Lenovo support will open a support ticket with Microsoft to solve it together. So no ping pong. Right between the partners because we are the joint support alliance then. Okay, that's nice. So it's a one-stop shop. It's a one-stop shop. You have an nice. integration for firmware and driver updates in the, in the Witness Admin Center and in the cluster app web, uh, we're updating. Mm -hmm. You often have also management services integrated in the, in the Admin Center like Dell Open Manage. Mm -hmm. And again, it's fully tested, fully supported together with the partners and those integrated system partners are normally are pretty early with the releases. So they maybe take longer for going into GA with their systems, mm -hmm. but they're the ones who are starting early with the development. Okay. So it's not only testing in an OS, it's really testing the whole integration, testing all tools around that, testing as that open manage against the new nodes, against the new operating system. And th this is only one of the children of the Azure Stack family. Um, we also have something called Azure Stack Hub, um, and the Azure Stack Hub will also be monitored by a vendor, if you would like. It's it's like let me say it this way: the the HCI would be, uh, the integrated systems for HCI mm -hmm. will become more and more like like the hub opportunity. Okay. Or like uh, like an option for a hub. So if one of the physical hard drives would fail the vendor would already know and could yep. come and replace your hard drive right. for you. That's, that's already possible. For example, with Dell, when you use OpenManage, you have this pre-alarming okay. support. Mm -hmm. And if you, for example, have a drive which is notifying, uh, okay, we have a predicted failure, mm -hmm. then it could, it, uh, the OpenManage could take its DREC integration, IDREC integration. Yeah. Okay, there's a failed drive. Open manage with target tasks, send an email uh, to Dell support, open a ticket, and the Dell support engineer calls you back. That's an Terrible. option you have. So I, when I worked for Dell from 2010 to 2013, mm -hmm. and that was all already possible uh, during that time. And all the others, Lenovo, HP, mm -hmm. they have the same. They have the same okay. options. Okay. And that's 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 really possible with the integrated system because you have these management tools integrated into Windows Admin Center, mm -hmm. into the in, into the whole hardware stack, and it can then give you these full view and and full opportunities. Okay. Now circling back to the hardware catalog, let's say I want an Azure Stack HCI, um, but my company mainly does VDI or mainly does. SQL database hosting. Mm -hmm. is, is there an easy way to select the right system for me or? Um, there are a few things. So you have these optimized four options you can okay. see here. Mm -hmm. and there you can say, okay, Microsoft SQL and virtual desktop. Mm -hmm. And then you can also say, okay, uh, I need to have a four, one to four node cluster. Okay. And then it filters for you the available systems, which are validated mm -hmm. for that solution. Um, and then you want to maybe have an integrated. And okay, but th this, this seems already a step too far because how will I know how much nodes I will need? Is, is there a, some kind of calculator or sizer or? Yep, so we have a sizer on our own. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I already had a few projects here. Mm -hmm. But let's do, do one for, for Baird. Okay, yes. Thank you. And then you have again, you're going again for the steps. You want to have an integrated integrated or validated system. I said we are recommending the integrated one. Yes, you did. Then what CPU family you want to use? AMD or Intel? Mm, I'm an Intel fanboy. Then 
preferred vendors you have? Let's say Dell. And yeah, just choose one of the big ones. The big ones, okay. And then if you require two or more nodes, but it's only, it's not a necessary option, mm -hmm. then you choose your availability. So if you want to lose, uh, want to be able to lose one or two, no uh, two nodes in your cluster. Mm -hmm. So normally you go for, um, then also for storage, if you can lo lose one storage array, so basically one storage from a server, Mm -hmm. Or if you can lose two, we always recommend two or more. So just just for the audience that that they're absolutely clear on what we're saying. Um, if you say we lose a node in the cluster, yes. What are we losing? Are a whole we losing server. a virtual machine? Are a whole we losing... server, a whole physical oh. server. Wow. Okay. And if we're losing storage, that mm -hmm. means if we, that we are losing here up to two copies of one piece of data. Okay. So as you know, uh, we can also, uh, did you know session on storage, my friend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm writing it down. Yeah, but it, it, as you know, we are copying data from server to server to server. So we're using local mm -hmm. storage like Nutanix is doing or vSAN is doing. And with that, we can lose two copies of the storage, so we could lose two volumes because of disk issues, server issues, and so on. You can also go for only one, but mm -hmm. we normally recommend two, so that you're running uh, a parity on th at least three servers. Mm -hmm. Then you can choose your storage type, mm -hmm. all NVMe or flash, so combination between NV NVMe and SSD, mm -hmm. or with HDDs. So you have oh, yeah. uh, flash storage plus HDDs. At this moment in time, still running HDDs in servers sounds like the 90s. Yeah, but it's still, it could be cheaper. Oh, that's true, that's true. And maybe you have some validated uh, uh, validated systems laying around, let's say the HP Gen 10 systems, which only mm -hmm. need require an update to be really validated systems. Mm -hmm. And there you have disks, and then you want to just use them. Oh yeah, yeah. would be an option. Or you want to uh, want to have slow archiving storage, where mm -hmm. it makes no sense to have SSDs because you just need the space. Then also HDD have still the the option, or they they still have the reason to exist. Mr. Flowfox, are you now going Dutch on my servers? No. <laughs> going cheap. Yes. It's just cost efficient. <laughs> yes. Very you don't good. know. I normally play safe. I'm not playing cheap. Um, then you have the option to optimize for performance and capacity. Mm -hmm. I know you're more the performance guy. Yes. You can add a few more things like persistent cache or in-memory cache, but it's not required. Mm -hmm. And then you can plan your future growth. So. 20% is normally a good number. And if you, for example, a host or if you require tenant separations, you would maybe also go for software defined networking. Mm -hmm. For the most enterprises, you do not require SDN. As okay. long as you not have multi tenancy or, or you want to separate test and prod environments, mm -hmm. uh, you don't need that. Okay. Then you add your workload. Mm -hmm. There you can add VDI, SQL, or general. With general, you can also you uh, build Kubernetes services mm -hmm. because those you can just say how many virtual machines you need. Okay. Figures. Let's go for VDI, mm -hmm. 100 VMs. Let's leave that with, as it is. Add your workload. So that's the workload we are, we will go for. We can also add SQL servers. Let's say. For SQL servers, mm -hmm. go next. Now it would do some calculation magic. Oi. Can and you then share it... the algorithm for this? No. Oh. Only, only the product group knows. Okay. Magic. I can ask. Yeah. But you know NDA. Don't tell yes, anyone. Yes. <laughs> and that's <laughs> our recommendation. True. For the service. It's our recommendation. 
Yes. So, so I can imagine that the vendor could also help you in recommending your perfect correct. system for you. Correct. Because we are not reflecting all possible options for drives, etc. So mm -hmm. you can take that one as an initial thought and mm -hmm. then go with that thought to Dell, to HP, to Lenovo, to partners like, like Akutec or Aptis, and they can then help you define the perfect system. There's still a lot of things we are not reflecting in its in its sizing tool, like mm -hmm. network cable, like, like network IOPS. Yeah, sure. With the RDMA type, you want to use Rocky or iWarp, but mm -hmm. as that it gives you a good estimation and gives you a good view on systems available on the market. Mm -hmm. And then you nice. see a few things for for planning purposes. As I said there's still work in progress. The IOPS estimation is coming soon. Mm -hmm. It's oh. also often requested. Okay. And is that uh, something hot off the shelf? Is that something we announced today? Mm, no, don't think so. Darn. Still waiting for that hot news, for that just barely out of NDA news from you. But I'll get it someday. Can we see them tonight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, for everyone, we are capturing that shortly before Ignite. <laughs> okay. Um, but, my friend. Yes. I know that you're looking for more deep dives and after the video to things to read up. Yes. I prepared something for you. Oh, what did you do? There's already a blog post I wrote for our friends from Petri Knowledge Base. Okay. Which describes the whole hardware purchase process. Okay. With the tools available, with the network uh, thingies available, mm -hmm. with the options like going validate was integrated with my personal view as always mm -hmm. and really going for for more depth also how to use the tools okay nice yep and because you asked for support yes also one thing uh, i want to put forward is how to create a support request and with that also who is responsible for what part of the support mm -hmm. plus a nice thing I really like with Azure Stack HCI, and you didn't mm -hmm. ask for it, is every Azure Stack HCI, which is connected to a subscription, mm -hmm. inherits the support of that specific subscription. Okay. So if you're having, let's say, a standard or, uh, or premier support on your subscription, mm -hmm. you can have as much HCIs connected to that subscription as you like. You will not pay more for the support. Okay. But so, then also the rules for that support package applies regarding uh, regarding the reaction time from Microsoft, right? Correct. So if you're really running critical workloads on your Azure Stack HCI, you might need to rethink your support strategy for Azure. For Azure. Right. But for example, with standard support, mm -hmm. you're getting that support level for 100 bucks a month. Okay. For that Number less of clusters. Sounds like a good deal. Sounds like a good deal. Cool. Perfect. Any other questions, my friend? Yes, lots, but I don't think it's uh, appropriate for this uh, uh, session. Maybe we should indeed make one on uh, on the storage of Azure Stack HCI and uh, maybe simulate a failure or two. Oh, then you need to get me some hardware. Oi. Then you need to go to the hardware chooser. Of your choice. No, but um, yeah, let's let's do a few more. And mm -hmm. for everyone who is interested into in the Did You Know series, just put your wishes below in the comments. And Baird and I, or some other friends, if Baird cannot answer, there, there are topics Baird maybe don't know. True. Sure. Yes. <laughs> um, we will find someone to answer it. Thank you, Bert. Have a great day. See you day. next time. See you next time. Bye bye.